Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Today we're going to be talking about a really important topic, and that is the difference between optimal thyroid lab tests and normal thyroid lab tests. So if you've ever been told before that your lab tests are normal, but you don't feel normal, this topic may explain the difference or the discrepancy between those two states. If you don't know me, I'm Dr. Childs, I'm an internist, and I specialize in treating patients with thyroid problems, helping people with hormone imbalances, and of course, helping with weight loss as well. But today is about the thyroid. More specifically, it is about the optimal thyroid lab test. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you, and I'll explain this, so it might look a little bit intimidating at first, but it is actually really easy to understand. Let me just explain it here. We're gonna be talking about the difference between the normal ranges, which is what your doctor may be using, and the optimal ranges um, uh, within those range. So it's basically a smaller range within the larger range, and why it's better to look at your thyroid through that lens. So when you look at thyroid function, you wanna be looking at it through the lens of what is optimal. And we've defined optimal as a more narrow range compared to the wide range that the lab testing company provides you when they, when, whenever they give you any sort of test result. Now, why this matters is because when you look at thyroid function, you wanna look at it like on a scale, okay? Or a spectrum. So imagine, you know, something like this. So over here, we have, you know, healthy, and then we have unhealthy, okay? So you wanna be as close to this healthy area as you can possibly be. But what may happen is that you have people who are here, who are here, who are here, who are here, and each person is a little bit different. They're not, and some people are worse than others and some people are better than others, but where you fit on that scale matters. Now, most doctors look at thyroid function as either on or off. And what I mean by that is either it's on and you are healthy or it's off and you are unhealthy. But that misses all the people in the middle. So that's why we care about these optimal ranges. What the optimal range allows you to do is find and identify thyroid problems early because then you can start treating them either naturally or with thyroid medication and you don't have to wait until you're you know grossly abnormal before your doctor puts you on thyroid medications or or you institute your own therapies by the way because what happens is that a lot of people are walking around um, and they have thyroid problems but they've been told that they're completely normal and they're like wait i feel terrible i have all the symptoms of hypothyroidism how can i be normal well you really aren't it's because you're looking at it through the, through the, the wrong lens so that's really the preface for what we're talking about here. Now, in addition to this, we're also gonna be mentioning all of the thyroid lab tests that you need to order. So if you can see here, we have several lab tests. Now, what you'll find is that most doctors only order one, but that misses all these other ones. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven thyroid lab tests that every time, not necessarily every time you get tested, but certainly the first time, you need to have every single one of these tested. And don't just look at these normal ranges, look at them through the optimal range. Now, what I've done here is I've already done the calculations for you um, and I've, I've made sure that I have created them in such a way where you can just input your own thyroid lab test into here and to see where you fit on this spectrum. Are you normal or are you optimal, okay? Now, what you need to understand um, is that the reference range that you are provided may be slightly different. So don't be alarmed if when you look at TSH per se, or let's say use this as an example, your range is you know, 0.4, to 5.0. That is perfectly normal. That happens sometimes, okay? The, the, the lab, the, these reference ranges are provided by the lab company and they may be slightly different, okay? So don't be alarmed if that's the case. I'm just using what I see on um, when I test patients in Arizona. So this is in Arizona. So let's talk about each one of these and I'll briefly sort of explain what they are and why they're so important and why you need to be getting all of these lab tests. So the first one is TSH. Now TSH stands for thyroid stimulating hormone. It is important. Um, it is not the single most important thyroid lab test. Many doctors act as if it is. That is not necessarily true, but it does provide uh, good information and it should be tested. It's especially helpful if you're trying to diagnose thyroid problems for the first time. Where it falls flat or where it you know, becomes less uh, consistent or less dependable is when you're using it to test how much medication you need. If your doctor's using it in that way by itself without any of these, without any of these others, you're gonna run into problems. Now, what you also find is that the, t the range for TSH is very broad. So it's 0.45 in, in this example to 4.5. That's a huge range. Now, what I'm telling you, this is what the lab is gonna provide you. They're gonna say, hey, if you fall between 0.45 and 4.5, let's say your result is 3.5. It's within this range, right? Because it's less than 4.5. Your doctor will say, nope, guess what? You are completely normal. Your TSH is fine. You do not need any thyroid treatment. But we have newer studies that show that a, more, that a tighter range of TSH is probably healthier. In fact, we know that people feel better when their TSH is somewhere between this range here. 
which I have defined as 0.5 to 1.0. So you can see it falls within this range, but it's a little more narrow. Now, where do I get this range? Well, I've actually grabbed this range from um, the, the ranges that doctors use for pregnant women. So if you know anything about medicine, you know that pregnant women are treated sort of in a class of their own and they're very protected. Nobody wants to do anything to harm a pregnant woman. So I, what I say here is if it's healthy enough for a pregnant woman, it's healthy enough for you, whether you're a man or a woman or premenopausal, postmenopausal, whatever, you can safely use this range that, they, that doctors use during pregnancy and not have to worry about anything. And they do this obviously because it's really important that during pregnancy that a woman has enough thyroid hormone. So they, they want that narrow range. So I say, why just apply it to pregnant women? We should apply this across the board because you'll have a lot of people who have a TSH of let's say 3.5, they're outside the optimal range, but they're inside the normal range, but they still feel poorly. And if they were treated or if they were told that they have thyroid problems, then they might look into other therapies, supplements, diet, lifestyle, et cetera, or use thyroid medication. So this is why this, this really matters. Now I won't go into as much detail on each one of these, but I do kind of want to show you what I'm talking about. So in the case of TSH, the range is smaller. So if the range was this wide, we're looking at for it, you know, 0.5 to 1.0. You want it somewhere within here. And if you're, let's say 3.5, that could be a problem. 4.5, that could be a problem, et cetera. Try and get it within this range here. So that's test number one. Now, in addition to TSH, you also need to be getting the free T4. Now, free T4 um, basically just tells you how, how much T4, which is a type of thyroid hormone, is available in the blood. And for T4, it's not as important as these other ones, but you should get it. Now, T4, the broad range is 0.82 to 1.77 in my example. And what I'm recommending here is try and get in the top 30% of this reference range. So what I've done is I've tightened this range up to 1.4 to 1.77. So that's where you would want your free T4 to be in the optimal state. Next one on the list is free T3. Now, free T3 is definitely much more important than free T4 because this represents the active thyroid hormone. It says, this is the most important thyroid hormone that you can test for in the blood. So TSA, if most doctors just check, check TSH, maybe free T4, completely miss out on the free T3, which is, a, which is a big deal. So make sure you get free T3. You have to be getting this one. Now, this range is 2.0 to 4.4, but again, we want it in the top 30%. And again, I've already done the calculation for you, and that is somewhere between 3.8 and 4.4. What you will find is a scenario like this that happens in a lot of thyroid patients. They will have a TSH of, let's say, 3.5, using the example I used before, and their free T3 is something like 1.9. So it's actually below this reference range, but if the doctor never orders it, they'll have no idea. So the TSH or the TSH will be high, the free T3 will be somewhat low, but it will never be tested for and no one will ever know that this patient has a thyroid problem. That's why you have to be checking your free T3 as well as your free T4. And again, we're looking for the top 30% of the reference range on free T3 and free T4. Next up, we have reverse T3. This one is not used by doctors hardly ever. In fact, they will try and sell you something like uh, this test is not helpful, it doesn't provide any information, or worse, that it's outdated in some sense. Um, and again, that makes no sense, but that, this is what they'll tell you, even though they don't have any information to back it up. Now, reverse T3, what it does is it competes with free T3 for binding on the cells. So if you have too much of reverse T3, let's say your reverse T3 is too high, it will make it so even if you have free T3 in your body, your body can't use it, okay? That's obviously a big problem. So that's why you have to check reverse T3 and free T3 and look at the difference between these two. You want to see, is my reverse T3 low and is my free T3 high? That's good. That's what you want. The higher reverse T3 gets, the worse you'll feel, which is why when we look at this, we look at it through a different, a little bit differently than the other ones. So the, the regular normal range that, that, will, that, will give, that your, um, the lab company will give you when you order reverse T3 is something like 9.2 to around 24, 25-ish. So 24.1 in this example, but don't be alarmed if it goes up to 25. Now, again, we want this number to be as low as possible. So I've said here, you want it at least less than 15.0. So somewhere in the middle here, you can, you can imagine this is nine and this is 25. You want it, you know, somewhere in this range here. You want it over in the low end of the range because what that means is there's less competition between reverse T3 and free T3 binding. So that's what you want as the reverse T3 to be at least less than 15. And again, by the way, I put the, put the, um, the units here. So you might look and see a completely different range um, on your lab test. So remember the units matter here. So for instance, free T3 is in nanograms per deciliter, or sorry, free T4 is in nanograms per deciliter, free T3 is in uh, picograms per deciliter, et cetera. So you have to look at your units and make sure they match up. This isn't gonna be a problem if you live in the United States, but if you live in another country, uh, Australia especially, they use completely different numbers. So you'll have to, you'll have to um, put, your, put your values into these units in order to, to plug them into this equation. So just an FYI there. 
Next up it would be the thyroid antibodies. So we have thyroid peroxidase antibody and thyroid, thyroglobulin antibody. Now I didn't write these out completely, but we're gonna talk about them in a pair because what these represent um, are antibodies which your body creates, which may be damaging and attacking your thyroid gland. You do not want these in your body, period, which is why the optimal range is zero, okay? You just really don't want any of these in your body at all. Now, what you will find though is there is somewhat of a range. And the reason for that is simple. Sometimes you can have thyroid antibodies. It doesn't mean you have Hashimoto's thyroiditis, but they can cause other problems and increase your risk of cancers and so on. So they will say, well, you know, sure, there's some, a little bit of a range here. So some people might have 12, other people, people might have 15 or whatever. And they say, well, that's not a big deal. That doesn't indicate the thyroid's being damaged necessarily, uh, but that's not optimal. Okay, you want those to be zero, but you don't want your immune system creating anything that is similar to a tissue inside of your body because it will eventually result in some sort of damage, either damage to the thyroid gland, or like I said, an increased risk of cancer, an increased risk of uh, pregnancy related issues, whatever it is, it's gonna cause problems, okay? So you want these antibodies to be as low as possible. These antibodies are typically tested when you're looking for conditions like Hashimoto's thyroiditis or autoimmune thyroiditis. But again, doctors go, I mean, you could go years without ever getting these tested. I mean, I know patients who have a thyroid condition because they've been, they know for sure they have a thyroid problem because they've had their TSH tested, but they've never had their antibodies tested, so they don't know the cause. And then suddenly, you know, maybe five to 10 years later, they'll hear something like this, like this video, like I'm explaining, they'll get these tested and it'll, it'll show that their antibodies are 1000. Well, that would have been good to know 10 years ago, because what's going to happen is if you don't catch this early, you'll end up with permanent thyroid damage because you weren't able to treat it. So you really do need to look at these. You don't have to test them every time, uh, but you want to look and see because it'll give you information as to what is the cause of your thyroid problem. And again, if they're high, the chances are very high, you know, not, not certain, but very, very, very high that you have Hashimoto's as the main cause of your thyroid disease. Then last I have this one here, and that is total T3. Now total T3, I personally really like this test and I, I, lean, I rely very heavily on it. You won't hear a lot about it from um, other sources necessarily, but I think it's actually probably one of the best tests that you can get for your thyroid. Um, and the reason is because it includes a combination of free T3, but also bound T3. So remember T3 and hormones, they don't travel through your blood just by themselves. They're usually carried on a protein. And so total T3 includes the amount of T3 that's being carried on a protein, like a carrier protein, and the amount that's free and available to be used by the body. Total T3 gives you that total amount. So the free T3 and the bound protein. So are the, the amount that's bound and being carried around. And it's really important. So this range is 71 to 180, which is pretty high. I like it to be in the top 30, uh, well, let's say 20 to 30% range. You want this to be as high as you possibly can, so percent. So look under here, I have 150 to 180, um, and the normal range would be 71 to 180. But look for it in this range here, because that's where, that's where you're gonna feel um, the healthiest. Uh, and again, if you can, get every single one of these th thyroid lab tests, especially the first time. If you've never, let's say you've had thyroid disease for six, seven, eight years or whatever it is, and you've only ever had your TSH, maybe your free T3, you need to get all of these. Get every single one of these, ask your doctor, give them by name. I mean, they're all right here. You can, you can get them from this video if you want, just write them down. Say, I want all of these thyroid lab tests. Get your results once you have them, plug them in, see where you fit, and see if your doctor's doing anything about this. I think you'll be surprised um, and this will be a, a good way to explain why you feel so poorly, even though you're technically in this normal range on a lot of these lab tests. But I find it, it's very unlikely that if you actually get all these seven tests, I think that was seven in there, sometimes I'll get more, um, it depends, that you'll find that almost one or more will always be abnormal. So it's, it's really easy to explain thyroid problems when you look at it through this lens. But if you don't, I mean, it's really, you can easily miss something if you just check the TSH. And lastly, one final word here is that if you don't see a thyroid lab test on this list, but your doctor's ordered one anyway, something like T3 uptake, it's, it's useless. You really don't need to worry about it. So these are the ones that actually matter. So again, don't ask for anything that isn't on this list. And if you have something which isn't on this list, you can ignore it. It's not very helpful, but do get these and look at the optimal range versus the normal range. So this can be kind of a confusing topic. So if you have questions about it, leave them below. Um, I think this is probably my first video doing this. I can't believe this is such an important topic and I haven't talked about it previously, but this is a really important thing that you should be aware of. Um, if you have questions, uh, make sure you leave them below. Um, and if you found that this explains some of your problems or, or a light bulb went off in your head, I wanna hear about that as well. So let me know. Um, and if you haven't already, make sure that you download my free thyroid PDF resources. I have tons of information just like this, all designed to help thyroid patients. Um, that's really all that I do is, you know, help people with hormone imbalances and thyroid problems. So um, download those if you haven't already. And that's all I have for you guys today. And otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.